Hi guys, so um, today I'm going to show you how to make a ghostly apparition using um, my fluids so that we can get some kind of freaky smoke like look uh, to create faces or ghost like um, organic patterns to use in your sort of short movies and stuff. Um, it's pretty straightforward and we'll just get there together and uh, there's all sorts of uses for this I'll, I'll go through a, a few different aspects of my fluids um, how we can create totally different looks and um, yeah so let's uh, rock and roll let's start from the beginning as such All right, so I'm just going to save this off as ghost face and then I'm going to rock on with a new scene okay so I like to do things a slightly different way I like to um, emit my f uh, fluids from a particle I only do that just because emitting from a particle allows me um, a little bit more sort of dynamic aspects so I mean I could emit from a piece of geometry but the piece of geometry I'm only going to be able to kind of keyframe that in, you know, in its translation uh, values. With a uh, particle, I could start using some of its dynamic attributes. Um, I'm not <laughs> in this uh, in this lesson. I'm not going to use this dynamic attributes, but um, that's just how I like to roll, really. Uh, so let's just go to the end dynamics menu, end particles, create a particle. We're leaving it at points, um, and then we're going to go to end particle tool, and as in another episode that I created. I just want you to copy these um, settings. Uh, so we've just got one particle, sketch particles, sketch interval zero and we're just going to click once in our scene and then go to the move tool and then we've got a particle. Alright, um, let's just get the outliner open and we can see we've got end particle and we've got a nucleus. So with the end particle selected let's just go modify center pivot and let's drag this sucker over here. I'm just going to hold X to snap it to the grid. And I'm just going to lift it up a bit. So with the M particle selected, I'm going to go into Control A, into the attribute area. I'm going to go down to the shading tab and I'm going to change this to a sphere just so we can see it a bit better. All right, so there's our particle. Cool and again. Next thing to do is we don't want it to drop to the floor. Just going to increase the timeline a bit. Uh, so if I rewind and play now, it's just going to start falling. We don't want that, so we're just going to go to the dynamic properties and we're going to turn on ignore solve of gravity, so that particle will just sit there doing nothing. So we can't add more particles um, because we haven't got an emitter in the scene, just so you know. So um, we're not dealing with an emitter at all, we're just dealing with a particle, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so we've got a particle. Now we want to emit some fluids from that particle. So go to the dynamics menu and we go to uh, fluid effects and we're going to create a 3D container now we can leave that 3D container where it is um, but if we just select the particle uh, sorry if we just select the fluid and then select the particle and go up to fluid effects add edit contents and then uh, emit from object okay now that fluid container is still going to stay where it is until we tell it to auto resize so by selecting the fluid control A to get into the attribute editor then we go down to auto resize and we're just going to tick auto resize so now if I rewind and play that's going to jump up to where our particle is now auto resize can be a little bit funky um, it, it can sort of its resize calculations and margins um, come down to the resize margins attribute here I like to crank this up to about three um, and I'm just going to bring my initial resolution up to about 25 and rewind and we'll see that change and I'll hit play now and we just see that we've got some fluids coming out so the first thing I want to do now is grab this particle and I'm just going to animate it a little bit um, I'm going to hit Shift W to animate its position. I'm going to scroll forward to about 10 frames. I'm going to drag it over here. Shift W, 10 frames. Drag it over here. Shift W. Now I don't want to go wild and start throwing this particle all over the place because our um, fluid container is going to have to follow that. And obviously, the bigger it gets, 
the more system resources it uses up. So for now, just for this, we're going to keep it in some kind of small zone. Uh, let's just go down a bit. And we just, you know, you could attach this particle to an animation curve if you want. There's all sorts of different ways to get this to move around, but just for this, I'm just going to be doing that. And then I'm going to go back to my first frame for the position, and I'm going to middle mouse drag along the timeline from that first frame to here. And I'm going to hit Shift W. So now that particle goes back to where it started, like so, which means that I can then go into the um, with the particle selected, I can go into Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Oh, excuse me, I just had a sneeze. Um, into the Graph Editor, and I'm just going to select all those curves, hit F, and we can see we've got those curves like so. If we go into View, and then go down to Infinity, we can see we get these lines carrying on here. So that means that we've got animation going on where everything's kind of bumpy in the graph editor. And then when it kind of flattens out, nothing's happening. Um, but if we want that animation to loop, then we're just going to go to uh, Curves, Post Infinity, Cycle. And you'll see that everything changes. And it just sort of carries on and on and on and on. We can adjust all that later. But for now, we can just uh, know that our particle is just going to keep doing its thing. It'll probably sort of stop at one point and then carry on. So let's just play it and see what it's doing. Alright, so it all looks a bit linear and horrible at the moment. So let's just go back into the animation editor, the graph editor, sorry. Um, and with those keys selected, which they are, I'm just going to stick a bezier on them just to smooth all of that out. So we should just get a bit more of that going on. And I'll just continue to go on and on and on and on. And that's great. So everything's working as I expected, which is a first. Okay, so let's start playing with the fluid now. So with the fluid selected, we're going to go and change a few aspects that we would normally change to get a fluid to look a little bit more fluidy. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go into the fluid emitter and I'm going to add some more density per voxels per second. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick this up to 10. So we run now and things are a bit thicker. I'm going to go back to the fluid shape and we're going to go into contents details, density, and I'm going to change that buoyancy to zero for now. I'm going to hit rewind and play. So that's all staying where it was. Look, there's another um, tutorial right there, how to write with fluids. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so th we can see that our fluid's kind of hanging around a bit here, um, and we don't want it to, so we're going to be using dissipation. So if I start cranking that up, you'll see that when the particle starts to write the fluid on, it also starts to disappear as well, which is exactly what we want. Super! Right, I'm going to bring the density scale up. Again, we can play around with that later on. So, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, come down to lighting. Everything always looks better when it's got some lighting and shadows on it. There we go. Um, I'm going to play around with this later on. The next thing I'm going to do is go to shading. Um, Colour-wise, this is really down to what you want to do yourself. I like things to look a bit dark and smoky. So I'm going to stick a dark shader on there. And then around here, maybe something slightly lighter. Like that. Um, as you can see, I've already got a colour selected there. So this is a constant colour. So it's always going to have that look. I like things to work on density. So the density of the fluid, so that I can have kind of an internal colour and an external colour. So I'm going to swap those around. So I've got dark inside, and I might make that a bit darker actually. Like so, and then this one, I might make it a bit brighter. 
Yeah, we'll play around with that later on anyway. Um, so we've got transparency here where we can make things thicker and thinner. Again, we'll come back to that later on. And we've also got the opacity fall off where we can really tighten in the fluid to the, the motion. Uh, I'm just going to kind of leave that there. So we can't really see much at the moment because our base resolution is way small. So I'm just going to stick this up to 65 for now. Um, I'm going to rewind. I'm just going to get rid of the grid. Just get on my nerves. Um, I'm going to hit play and see what we've got going on. Right, so there's a little bit more detail going on there, but still things are looking a little bit kind of fat and bulbous. So we want to start adding in some effects to get uh, our fluid looking a bit more swirly. Um, so, a few ways we can do that. First thing I like to do is introduce uh, some actually I'd like to introduce some turbulence into the emitter first so we go into the emitter and we'll scroll down to fluid emission turbulence and we'll take that up rewind and play it's just gonna kind of mash things up a bit that's uh, a little bit too much so let's bring that down a bit it just means that everything's not going to be emitted in the same way oh, yeah, it's too much we're just gonna have a bit to rewind and play yeah, that'll do. Right, so back to the fluid shape. And we've got some turbulence in here, so we'll start cranking it up. Um, 0.4, and we'll see what that looks like. So now you can see we started to get some waves uh, of kind of turbulence. As that smoke dissipates, it's starting to make some interesting shapes. Now, this section really, again, is going to be a personal thing. So you know we might want to tweak around with these settings a little bit to see how much turbulence we want in there and we can also play around with the velocity swirl so we can bring that up with a touch of noise rewind and play now I also think at the moment my density scale might be a little bit too high I'm just going to bring that down a bit to rewind and play again. So we're starting to get a look. Let's try taking that swirl right up and see what it does. This is kind of how I tend to play with all of our fluid stuff. It's just to get a look that you like. It's an artist. These all of these tools are here for you as an artist to be able to kind of play around and tweak to your heart's desire. But if you know the kind of the basic fundamentals of what we tweak in the first place then it's kind of easy to get somewhere so you can see that everything's swirling around we've got all this kind of crazy uh, turbulence going on I might leave it like that for now you can play around with the frequency you'll start to get some odd results I'll be honest but um, you know it might be what you want we can add some noise into the fluid as well if we want it's going to kind of break it up a bit but as you can see the noise is making it noisy we just take that up to something like one might be able to see that better um, if you've got these artifacts going on in your simulation then you just know that it's noise it's always noise that makes this look and you kind of smooth it out as you get rid of it we just have a little tweaky touchy of noise there it's kind of like a cookery program this a little touch of this a little sprinkle of that but you know, everything needs a tweak. Right, so you probably saw my example earlier. I had some kind of glows and stuff like that going on inside. We'll get to that. But I want to show you something else first before we go and start making a head and all that kind of thing. Um, if we go into output, uh, sorry, if we go into surface, we can click uh, surface render here and then we can grab our uh, we can click on soft surface and then we can go to where's the uh, transparency so we'll pull the transparency out okay now all of a sudden we've got something very different um, and I just wanted to show you it just because it might be something you've not really looked at before because you can play this and it almost acts like an end cloth material um, it's very neat and again could be used uh, for apparitions. I mean, then if you if you've seen the Harry Potter stuff, you'll you'll have known.
notice that this kind of thing is used quite a lot. This may not be the way that they do it, but um, yeah. So you can get some interesting looks like this, and of course you can shade it, color it and whatnot. Um, so we could just come down to the color and start playing around with, we can give it like a wire gradient, or we could just give it a constant and start tweaking the color like so. Um, we can even plug a color in here if we want. So if we just go to like a center gradient, we can do some crazy little effects, which can look quite cool. Um, again, no, it's all personal taste. It's all about what you guys, you know, think looks good, etc. We could have something that's just like really black and inky. Um, and then we could go down to the lighting and pull the light and brightness up a bit. We might need to bring the brightness of this up a little bit more or something. Give it some sort of green look. <clears throat> and also what you could do is you could save just you know before this step, before we changed it into a surface, so we had a similar shape but made out of just fluid particles, we could save that off, then we could come back turn this into um, a surface like this and then import the other one back in over the top so you have smoke and this surface going on together which could be an interesting look uh, do you know what should we do it oh yeah let's do it all right let me just get a different color going on here um, uh, phone gonna have to get that so yeah where was we sorry I just had a quick phone call there um, I was going to export this out and import it back in again so I'm just going to undo I'm just going to go back to a volume render for a minute because I didn't save this off before back to volume render and the fact that it's gone crazy like that is probably down to the transparency being like so yeah, so I could just save this off, uh, so seeing as, I'll just call this one, and then with this, like this, I'm going to bring this opacity back down again, and I'm going to turn it to a surface render again, and rewind and play, so it's all going crazy like that, and then I was going to go file, import, one, so we've got the one there as well, and if we rewind and play, we should have the two of them over the top of each other. It's looking a bit softer, I must admit. Um, let's just hit four, and let's hit five again. So we've got the one fluid. Um, it's there, and I just want to sort of spread that one out a little bit more. Um, so we get its density scale up a bit more and maybe a little bit of buoyancy so it looks slightly different maybe it dissipates slightly less we'll get uh, a little bit more turbulence in there just to change the shape a little bit more from what we've got so if I rewind and play there we go maybe that buoyancy was a little bit too much uh, let's just pull that down to about here yeah, let's rewind and play but yeah, you can see we get the two working together now. So you've got two effects going on. So you've got something that looks a little bit more solid um, with something that looks a little bit more smoky. If you render them off differently, but with the same um, same simulation going on, you can then treat them slightly differently in post-production. So yeah, that's, it's a different look. And obviously we can add a shader to this. We can do some sort of subsurface craziness. Um, yeah, I mean, if we made everything just black, uh, we'd probably get some kind of better look. So let's just get rid of that. Let's get on this and let's just bring this down here and here. Let's just turn it black. And then if we went to this part call and we just sort of made this black also, yeah, you start to get something crazy going on. Um, sort of thick but with kind of smoky like elements to it um, and it's not easy to get a thick fluid like that your your um, density of your container would have to be really high uh, to get that so if you could match those colors up a bit more and with this fluid uh, we could add a bit of transparency to it so you can see through it a bit better <coughs> excuse me um, 
and just turn the brightness of the light up a bit. I think there's an area up here on the hard surface where you can add a bit of specularity to it. It doesn't seem to come off too well, to be honest. You can't sort of see that specularity so well. Maybe it's a render thing. But yeah, anyway, that's that's one way to go. That's one different idea that you might not have come across. Um, that's sort of kind of interesting. You get some interesting shapes going. And some interesting thickness. And this is just for if you're trying to create some kind of ghost type scenario or something like that. Yeah. Right, so uh, let's just go back. Let's open up our one scene. And uh, rewind and play. We should just have the fluid going on. Don't like the colour that we've got going on here. Let's just get rid of that. And we'll just get back to black. Uh, let's go with that dark grey. Okay, so we've got a fluid and it's doing its fang. But I want to introduce some like glowiness into the centre of it. Um, yeah. Let's do that, but first let's import our model. So I've got a little model here. You guys must be able to find something online. It's pretty simple to find a, a model. Uh, something, you know, something simple that you could just put some fluids inside of. And yeah, so I'm just going to import my model, which is head. Here it is. And uh, I might tweak some of the verts or whatever just to sort of open its mouth on that. It's not rigged, so I'm just going to be doing it like manually. Um, something like this, I don't know. It's bloody terrible, but we'll uh, just grab a couple of bits here and here, and here and here, and drag those down as well. And yeah. Maybe I'll have his mouth like... Rrr. Yeah, that's better. Kind of looks like the dude out of um, the mummy, you know, when all the bees come out of his mouth. Uh, something like that, and of course we can animate this, but we're not gonna now. Right, so I'm just gonna add a little shader to this dude um, because I just want to make him transparent. Want to see where I'm going? So I'm just gonna scale this down, bring it in here. And it's really simple. Uh, scale it up a little bit more. I'm just going to. Uh, I was thinking about reversing the normals, but I'm just going to see how we go first. So let's select the fluid, let's select the head, and we're just going to go to fluid effects, make collide. Okay. Um, and I'm going to grab that head shader, and I'm just going to drag that transparency right up because I don't want to see it. And let's rewind and play and see what we get. So obviously we've got our particle just going outside the bounds all the time of the head. So, you know, we need to tighten that up. So we probably should have done that in the first place. But let's just do it now. So let's just grab the head, bring its transparency up here a bit more. Let's grab that particle. Let's uh, grab the fluid, turn off its evaluation, its disabled evaluation. Let's rewind and let's just get the particle doing what we want it to do so we go forward to that keyframe well we don't want it all the way out there so I'm just going to put it inside him about there shift W onto the next keyframe yeah let's just I don't know we'll have it down here a bit bloody hard to see with the transparency on uh, shift W I'm just going to go to the next keyframe again pull this in here going to bring it up a bit um, and if you don't just want it just inside all the time, we can sort of have some of it coming outside. I mean, come on. Um, and we just want to just do something just so we get a build up of fluids inside this dude's head. And we go forward again. Yeah, we'll let that one be out there. We go forward again. Uh, yeah, we'll let that one be down there. And we go forward again. Let's just go back inside again. Shift W. Uh, because when you're creating some kind of apparition, you don't want to like too make it too linear. Um, otherwise, you, it's not you know it's not going to be something strange and different. Maybe this one, maybe this one will have down here. Shift W, and let's be really sinister and pull it out of his mouth. Probably won't give us the look we want, but you know. So we go Shift W on there, 
and then sort of down here, shift W. Boom. Right, so let's grab the fluid, turn back on the evaluation, get our particle head, scroll to our shader, back to zero, rewind and play that. Let's see where we go. So the whole thing about it is to be getting kind of the idea of a shape rather than just being totally literal. Um, which we kind of not. We haven't. What we haven't got now is enough time for this particle to emit enough fluids inside this. So there's a couple of ways we can do it. But let's just do it this way. Let's just make sure we save this. And then we're just going to go uh, window animation editor's graph editor with the particle selected. I'm just going to grab all of this. I'm going to hit my R key for scale. Make sure you've saved your scene first because sometimes scaling keys can make my crash. So we're going to scale that out there and we're going to drag this along there just so we've got a little bit more time. So let's rewind and play. And we just want to start looking for something that looks like it's creating a, a bit of a structure inside that could at some point at some angle give us something that lets us know we've got a head in there and you can hear my machine whirring around here we go start to see a bit of nose there a bit of mouth a bit of eyes we've got things leaking out of everywhere but that's the general idea of it I think mean, it's, uh, yeah, we've got some sort of eye showing there. Obviously, in a minute, we'll turn up the simulation and we'll get you know, a bit more of an interesting look. Again, here with this head going on, we can turn this into a, a surface like we did earlier. So you get a different look once again to create, you know, a character type scenario. We may want a little bit of buoyancy in our fluid just so that it sort of captures the inside of that head but yeah it's all looking a bit weird not quite what we want so let's grab the fluid let's just go with a little bit more buoyancy let's just hit 10 on there maybe it dissipates slightly less and maybe we can stick our resolution up a little bit more. But the, the next thing I was going to do was to give it that glow. And that's going to help a little bit as well. So with the fluid selected, we're just going to go into temperature and turn that to dynamic grid. And fuel and turn that to dynamic grid. All right. So then if we come down to the temperature tab, we can turn up the temperature scale. And the fuel also. Let's just rewind and play. You see what's starting to happen. So now we've kind of got that kind of fiery look going on. Which is quite cool. Uh, we've got the inside. Oh, I think that blob there. That blob there needs fixing. I know what that is. That blob is the inside of the mouth. So let's just see if we can see what we're doing. I'm just, I mean, you won't have to do this because you would have done this ready but we'll just go donk 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 delete add bump bump all the way forward ding donk right rewind play so we're just trying to get this head so now we can see the mouth a bit better I opened up we started to get some brow stuff going on. And again, we're, we're not trying to completely replicate this head. That's that's not like the whole point of this is just to get a general shape. Because when you're creating a ghost like apparition, that's what you want. You want to be able to see like, oh, was that a bit of a face I just saw? You know, that kind of thing. So we've got a head shape going on. We're still quite early into the simulation. So obviously we can tweak this um, fluid. So we can see some eyes there and a bit of mouth. 
Well, that's kind of cool actually. It sort of looks a bit nasty. So we can tweak the uh, scale of the fuel and the scale of the temperature as well, which would give us sort of slightly less more of an, an interior glow, which is also a good look. Um, we can dissipate that and we can dissipate um, the heat released and the max temperature <clears throat> and then we can come down and just start tweaking the shaders again so we could have a bit more darkness we've got the incandescence option now because we're dealing with the the glow the interior glow so we can bring up more darkness so it's just glowing just inside that could be an interesting look indeed I quite like that and obviously you can change the colors so if you don't want yours to be yellow it can be blue if you want um, so we'll just add a, a blue in there and brighten that up green whatever you like it's your you know it's your thing green could be a little bit more spectral that's kind of interesting um, can it you can it render and you can add glows to this and that kind of thing uh, as you can see, it's, it shows up in the render, and we can add a little bit of glow intensity, render that, and it will start to glow bit by bit. So, I wouldn't recommend doing a glow in Maya, though, to be honest, its glows are not good. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll just add a bit more darkness to mine. Just get rid of this blue, it's upsetting me. Could have a bit more green in there, a bit more black, just to give it. Or you could just go way crazy, and we could just like really green it up. Just to make it look really spectral. That kind of that kind of look. Personally, I like to do things black, but you know. Just hints of green. Good enough. Alright, so just going to give it a bit more on the old resolution. Uh, I'm going to do a play blast. And I will be back shortly to show you the play blast. The joys of YouTube. So, 112 days later and the play blast is done. Not really, it only took about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, we can see... The times we're starting to see the uh, the face face in there. We've got some issues that we can work on, but yeah, I mean it's it's working. It's doing what we want. I like to give you guys the idea. It's kind of like kung fu. If anyone's ever studied any martial arts, your martial art instructor and some of the moves in certain kung fu um, practices are known as ideas. Um, and you're given the idea. And then the student takes the idea on and makes it their own and progresses with it. So, you know, I could spend hours and hours and hours getting this bang on, but um, I don't get paid enough. So, you know, we just uh, we just rock with the ideas. So, but it's not a bad idea. So we we can see we've got facial features going on, but we can see some of this uh, rippling going on around here. Now that's just a density issue. There's too much density, uh, too much information in each voxel. So as you know, if you know about voxels, you may not. I'll just explain it. But down in this grid here, you've got a grid, obviously. But that grid isn't just flat on the floor there. That grid goes up there, across there, and back here in X, Y, and Z, and creates lots of little cubes called voxels inside this area which you can't see but you can switch that on um, so if we just go back let me just kill F check for a minute if we just go back here and I'll just turn this down because otherwise it's going to murder my CPU but we keep this down here and if I go into display and I look at the boundary draw I can turn this to full and we can see that that is how it works so these if we hit four um, and just get rid of the model for a minute. Oh, I actually got rid of that whole thing. Let's just go in here. Oh, anyway, you can see these little particles going on. These little fluid particles are going on inside here. Basically, they're just sitting. This is like one big computational grid 
that's how things work. This voxel says, hey, I've got some uh, particles in here, or fluid particles, I'm going to create this sort of shader, and it just moves and moves, and they all go around into different um, different voxels, and that's just how it works, really. And obviously, the more voxels you have, the denser the look will be. The less voxels you have, the less dense the look will be. Um, and that's how it works. So you can see our particles is, is going into different voxels, and they're computing um, a different effect on each flim flam right so let's just turn that back to uh, bottom and so the density side of things would be addressed by playing around with the density but also by playing around this if we can just get a part where it looks a bit dodgy just keep going So all this kind of thing here is just a density thing. So you want to play around with your transparency um, output just to tighten that up a little bit, just to make it a little bit less obvious. In some places, if we could pull that back a bit, we can bring our transparency down a little bit more, and then just go into <clears throat> excuse me the density scale, and perhaps bring that back a little bit more. And as you can see, it starts to soften off that kind of blocky effect. <clears throat> So there you go, it's kind of cool and obviously again, once again with this we can turn this into a surface render and just knock ourselves out because you know there's all sorts of interesting things we can do with a surface render. Um, <clears throat> just uh, why is my colour not turning up? So yeah, soft surface, surface threshold. Uh, triangulate mesh, just transparency. Let's bring that way down there. We've got color incandescence going on. Get rid of that. Um, yeah, so we can also get you know some kind of really nasty looking look going on here. But all of these things combined together could create something of wonder that you can just impress your friends with and show your mum. Uh, that's about it for me guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Just again, just you know, just on a final note with Maya and all of these little things here, I just sit down and I think, do you know what Maya, what can we do? What can we do? Can we do something cool and different? And you totally can. Like if you just know the basics of how to play around with stuff, then you just you just go and create and sit down and play. Because Maya there's there's so many different ways of thinking with Maya, you know. Um, I didn't learn anywhere that I could just create one particle and use that inside a fluid. Because, I mean, what I can do with that particle now, is, if I want, is I can make that particle dynamic. Um, so, let's just go back to volume render. Wow. Um, let's just go back a few steps instead. Um, let's just get my grid down a bit. See, I'm always going to go, but then I'll stay. Let's just grab the particle and we'll just go window animation. It is, oh no, actually, let's go to channel box and we'll just grab all that and we'll break the connections on that. So we've just got a particle again. Our particle's in there, and well, what do I want to do with this particle? I could just, let's just get rid of the head. I'll rewind it. And with our particle selected, I'll just go to a field, perhaps, and I'll add some turbulence. I'll go into the turbulence, and I'll pull down the attenuation, and I'll turn up the magnitude. And if I rewind and play now, our particle is going to be affected by turbulence, and we're going to get, you know, an animation based on the turbulent field, as you can see. It's going all over the place, but... That's that's the difference in using a particle instead of a sphere. Um, I can get rid of this, get rid of the turbulence, go back, grab the particle, go into fields, just go to a volume axis. Okay, and with the volume axis selected, I'm just going to go and create a cylinder, and I'm going to scale that up, and I'm going to put that over the top of my particle, and I'm going to say trap inside a little bit, um, bring the mag magnitude up a bit. Uh, I'm going to turn off away from axis and I'm going to turn on around axis. So now our particle should start spinning like so. 
I could turn that trap inside up a little bit more so that that particle stays within some sort of bounds. But now we've got a totally different simulation. Hence why we use a particle. Uh, and again, we could get rid of that volume axis. I could just stick in a ground plane. I'll scale that up. I'll bring that up a bit. Let's rewind the uh, simulation. And with the ground plane there, I'm just going to go into end dynamics, end mesh, create a passive collider. I'm going to grab that particle. And now I am going to um, go into dynamic properties and I'm going to untick ignore solve gravity. So my particle is going to drop and hit the floor now. Boom. And it's just going to lay there. You see, you see where I'm coming from, young pad ones. And obviously we can select the fluid, select the floor, go back into the dynamics menu and say to fluids, make collide. And rewind and play so that fluid should sort of stick to the floor a bit better, like so. That is the joy of using a particle. If you've got a particle, you can just do what you want. Amazing, absolutely amazing. We can make that bounce down some blocks if we want. I've got way too much time on my hands. Um, let's just grab a block grab another block and grab another block put it there and let's just polygons mesh combine edit delete by type history modify center the pivot give it a little rotation so our particle can fall just go into end dynamics menu end mesh create a passive collider rewind the simulation our particle is there let's scale down our steps a little bit let's just put them here um about there and let's just rewind and play so we've got oh a particle is falling what's that particle doing so i stuck to it son of a bitch particle you weren't supposed to do that so uh you know maybe we'll turn our friction down on the Thing. Yeah, there we go, and the particle start to fall. So the particle selected, let's just go back to um, the collisions. Let's turn down the friction on that, and let's just make it bounce. Do, do, do. And let's just make our surface bouncy. Do, do, do. So we're getting a bit of a bounce. And obviously the fluid is following it. Amazing. And if we make that fluid dissipate a bit more and have a lot less, um, a lot less fluid, a lot less density, should I say, contents, details, density, let's bring that density scale down a bit. Let's just go to the fluid amount and bring that down to about two. And then we go back to the fluid itself. Uh, let's just rewind and play that. So we can see our ball a bit better. Loads and loads of things to do. Anyway, you've had way too much of me today. I'm out of here. Goodbye.